Hey everyone, and welcome into a special episode of the Big Ten Huddle. This is going to be a short one. We just wanted to update you on a huge addition for Illinois football coming in. We have Sonny Verma with us from the Illini cast and also brand new Locked On Illinois. Is it Illinois, Illini, just Locked On Illinois? What is it? it it's Locked On Illini. Okay, locked on a line. I very good. So go check out Sunday over there. Brand new, so he's not like taking it over somebody else. This is all new. So if you're an Illinois fan, seriously, go uh, go lock on with Sunny over there at uh, Lock On Illini. So all right, Sunny, let's get to the big news. Okay, so big news here: Terrence Brooks from Texas, uh, a huge addition out of the transfer portal for Illinois. I mean. When I saw this, I was like, this is great news for Illinois, especially after some of the losses that they've had. Uh, guys exiting for the transfer portal. I think uh, a couple guys went to Louisville. One guy went to Georgia Tech. So a few guys like that. Maybe they all weren't like star power guys, but still guys that you wanted to keep. So just tell me, how big is this for Illinois football? It's huge. Uh, Illini football right now it has some pressure on it. Like uh, a lot of the fan base is insecure compared to the basketball team uh, about a lot of the guys that we're losing. But And the biggest weakness on this football team was our secondary. And what happened since the season ended, we lost arguably our two best cornerbacks in Zachary Tobe. Uh, and so basically, and uh, Todd Nicholson, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Now, these are guys where our defense was bad last year. And so the guys that are remaining on our secondary, the best guy it was probably okay. You know, you're talking about a Miles Scott. And so the fact that we got a guy like Terrence Brooks, who two years ago was a five-star recruit from Texas. And JR, you know, I also do a little Texas coverage uh, mm -hmm. on a different platform. And so I was covering Terrence Brooks entering the transfer portal for that team, you know, for Texas. And so... The fact that my worlds kind of collided this year, um, it works out for the Illini. I'm super excited. I think, inarguably, this was the biggest addition for the Illinois football team moving forward because I have zero reservations, zero hesitation for the offense this year. I think behind Luke Almeyer as quarterback, the offensive line is completely built up. Our running back rooms is one of the five best uh, in the conference, I feel like. It's the defense that I was worried about. And the fact that, you know, we got a guy who I think immediately raises both the floor and the ceiling of that room brings Illini fans a little bit more at ease for uh, what's about to come. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Um, you know, with uh, some of these guys who have been leaving recently and obviously Terrence Brooks coming in being the highly skilled player that he is. I mean, does he fill a role where somebody left, you know, at cornerback or something like that? Or is this just like, hey, this is brand new guy. Move everybody back one because this is going to be the leader of the secondary here. Uh, what hole does he or role does he fill here? I mean, both. Like, you know, uh, Tavian, Tav Nicholson was our best cornerback last year. And I feel like I'm being nice when I say he was probably a little bit above average. His problem was he led the Big Ten in penalties. This guy just mm. couldn't contain himself. Like every single game, he would cost us 10, 15 yards. And he ultimately, he immediately transferred to, I believe, Ole Miss, but ultimately ended up at Louisville. He was our number one go-to guy coming into the year. And then shortly before the spring uh, game, we had Zachary Tobe, who, was, who had started a few games first last year. He decided to enter the transfer portal. And now a, a cornerback room, which we already thought was pretty weak, got even weaker. And to the point where even me, one of the most optimistic Illini fans you're going to find, was like, yeah, I, I'm not sure what's going to happen with that room. But when I found out Terrence Brooks was uh, entering the transfer portal, again, having started to build a couple of contacts with both of these teams, people sort of kind of reached out to me and said that, hey, uh, he's actually going to visit Illinois. I didn't think too much of it. And then, um, sorry, I said, "Wow!" Just oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think too much of it, but uh, because you know, uh, Terrence Brooks is a top prospect, right? He's he's a guy who right. basically, with this commitment now, has canceled visits to Michigan. He's canceled visits to USC. And Jr., you're you're an Ohio State fan. Terrence Brooks was a, originally an Ohio State commit. Yeah, you know, like this is a, it's a top 
and talent. And so for Illinois to be able to lock him down, he's immediately CB1. He's the guy that we're going to kind of count on to develop under Aaron Henry. You know, Aaron Henry was one of the key guys uh, to develop, you know, Devin Witherspoon and that outstanding cornerback room that we had a couple of seasons ago. And I think that's one of the reasons he decided to commit to us this weekend. That was actually my next question. So, you know, Brett Bielema, he loses Ryan Walters uh, after just the fantastic campaign, had Devin Witherspoon and uh, go to the NFL, and he's done fantastic there as well. I know a lot of uh, the credit went to Ryan Walters for the development of Devin Witherspoon and some of those other guys uh, that did really well under him. However, uh, you know, when Ryan Walters moved on, you see Ryan Walters get these guys at Purdue, the Georgia, uh, Nyland Green, he goes there. And you kind of left Illinois thinking like, okay, is Illinois going to profit at all from like Devin Witherspoon going on and maybe get some of that cachet of like we got a first round pick or top 10 pick uh, in the uh, NFL draft at corner here and that kind of stuff. I mean, tell me, what does this do for Brett Bielema? Or do you feel like, oh, no, this was just all NIL. We threw all the money at him. <laughs> Hey, what was what was it that went on here? So not at all. Uh, the key guy, I think, in this recruitment, at least from what I was told, was Aaron Henry. Aaron Henry was actually yeah. the cornerbacks coach when Ryan Walters was the, was the defensive coordinator. And then obviously mm -hmm. we all know Ryan Walters left to Purdue to become the defensive coordinator. And Brett decided to promote or head Aaron coach. Henry. He went to Purdue to be the head coach. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. And uh, uh, yeah. Brett decided to recruit Aaron Henry to be the uh, defensive coordinator. So what, you know, not a line I fans may not know is just a couple, like about a month ago, we lost our defensive backs coach to a medical condition, a cornerbacks mm -hmm. coach. So Aaron Henry at this point, it seems to be that moving forward next season, he's also going to co coach the cornerbacks and that we're mm -hmm. the next assistant coach that we're going to hire is going to coach safeties. Now, if you talk about Aaron Henry before this past season, he was a great A recruiter. He's, the, he's one of the guys who got all that cornerback talent to buy in and develop them to the levels that they did. So in my opinion, this was an Aaron Henry victory. This was Aaron Henry convincing Terrence Brooks, hey, look, I'm going to be coaching you in that room. You see these guys. You see, you know, uh, Brooks, uh, sorry, Witherspoon from a couple of years ago. I'm going to develop you into that, and I'm going to be the one in the room coaching you. And so I think, if nothing else, this is a Brett Bielema and uh, Aaron Henry victory as much as anything else. I mean, NIL helps. I think perception-wise, right. JR, this helps. Because, again, now Terrence Brooks has canceled visits to Michigan. He's canceled a visit to USC. What this kind of does is it establishes that Illinois is not going to – we're not going to win every NIL battle, but when Brett recognizes a weakness, we're not necessarily going to be outspent every single time, too. We're going to be a little bit more efficient with our money and not one of those teams where if we have a need and we find out another team is interested, that we're automatically going to lose out on it. Yeah, I mean, the spring portal window is a great time to do that because if they're transferring out of the SEC, I don't know if that rule applies for Texas yet. I think it does because they're technically still in the Big 12 until June 1st or something no, like does. that. It but it, it, the clock started for them at February 1st. I found did out. it? Okay. So, yeah, he wasn't able to go anywhere else, and Illinois was able to capitalize on that. So, great move by Brett there uh, making that happen. So, uh, Sonny, before I let you go, this is great uh, hearing that. Anybody that's next, I know you got your ear really to the campus here. I'm not asking your name names, but is there anybody you see next? Any good news coming for Illinois, you think? I'm feeling very, very optimistic. Uh, there's a gentleman wide receiver named Zachary Franklin, who was an outstanding wide receiver for UTSA a couple seasons now. Those years came under current Illini offensive coordinator Barry Lenny Jr., Mm -hmm. um, Franklin was one of the top rated uh, transfers last season. He ended up going to Ole Miss. Didn't, he was injured a lot. He didn't really get much playing time. But now as a graduate transfer, he's got one more season. And the fact that he's visiting Illinois this particular weekend, the feedback I'm getting is that the stars are aligning. And it just kind of makes sense for him. And again, he's also someone who has other 
big teams that uh, are currently offering him. But I think he's a player who kind of recognizes that this is his last chance for Illinois. He would immediately become wide receiver one. Uh, we have some, we have a lot of talent in the wide receiver room, but no one established and no one who can be the senior guy, especially after losing a guy like Casey Washington last year, Isaiah Williams last year. Yeah. So, you know, Franklin has a chance to come in here in a, in an offensive court, in an offensive system that he's completely familiar with. And immediately, uh, one other note I should mention about him is that he doesn't finish graduating till summer. So wherever he commits, he's going to have to learn a new playbook. Mm. He won't need to do that with Illinois. He knows that with the familiarity that he has with Barry Lenny Jr. So again, for me, when you think, uh, you know, logically and, you know, again, the feedback I'm getting from the visit that he's on right now, that it's a simple matter of whether he likes the vibes that he's getting from Champagne, And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that we find out this week that uh, he might be committing as well. Get like a vibe check out there or something like that. On three's got their re- prediction uh, recruiting machine. We need like a vibe check machine or something <laughs> like that to figure that out. Uh, okay. Hey, Sonny, thank you so much for coming on here. Like I said, everybody, go check Sonny out. A Lion Eye cast, friend of the show. We very much appreciate Sonny coming on here, sharing some of his insights. And also, if you're an Illinois fan, even if you're not an Illinois fan, you're a Big Ten fan, go check out locked on a lion eyes sunny over there going to be doing great work and who knows you might even see me over there from time to time sunny and i are good buddies and so uh we uh come on each other's shows quite often sunny anything else you want to get to before we get out of here no not at all it's uh i'm just saying you know uh the the vibes as we talked about have always been pretty fun on the basketball side but uh the football side i think is about to get a little bit more exciting as well i love it i love it all right thank you so much sunny for coming on thank you everybody for watching have a good one